got Chris Watson on the line from USC 247. Uh, the Trojans are going to spring practice rather soon. And uh, we're taking a look at USC football. So if you look at the, the coaching staff, uh, obviously, Graham Harrell's got a year in the offense, uh, it being entrenched. Uh, as you look across the board, uh, what are some of the changes that uh, you want to take note of in terms of what the, the approach is going to be this year versus what it's been in the past? Yeah, I think that's the biggest question mark coming into the offseason because USC, they've made a lot of coaching changes since Clay Helton has, became the head coach. Um, I think that maybe that the assistants caught more of the blame than they should have, and Clay Helton somehow avoided it. But again, we're in a situation where it seems like an entire side of the ball, uh, you know, has new coaches again. And I think that the biggest uh, criticism of the coaches in the off season, the last few years, was hey USC doesn't, or even the last decade, I guess, ever since Pete Carroll left, really is. They're not physical in the offseason. They don't tackle in practice. And then it shows up in games with sloppy tackling and they play bad defense. I mean, last year they had they just played bad defense and they did the year before. That's why Clancy Pendergast is gone. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about USC being more physical in the offseason and actually working on tackling. So I think that's the biggest thing USC fans are going to look for is, hey, uh, is is the team actually trying this and doing this? And uh, if they do, I think there should be some kind of results i really do i think they should be better uh the other thing is is just schematic wise is this coaching staff any good i'm not convinced to be perfectly honest with you todd orlando was fired from texas uh he's the new defensive coordinator at usc his defense at texas last year ranked worse than clancy pendergast's defense at usc did so i think that you know maybe you can't figure that out in the off season because the team is playing itself right when they do go into to live practices um but you know i will find out something we'll be able to observe something if the defense is shutting down the offense that's going to be a great sign uh but we'll see what happens because usc didn't make you know the big time uh coaching assistant hires that they would have if clay helton had been let go and they had hired somebody else they would have been able to get uh better you know better assistant coaches because they're not playing for basically a dead man walking is what it feels like for a lot of people that clay helton will eventually get fired unless he really turns things around so i think that that's what people are looking for is okay are they more physical in practice are they doing these things that you know have fans have been complaining about for 10 years because if they are that's a positive step forward and then on top of that does the defense actually look good uh, because if they do that's big. That's USC's defense hasn't been good in a long time. Uh, but you know, we'll see how much we can we can find out in the off season. But that's something I'm looking for. If the, if USC's defense is looking good, it's a great sign. And if they're not, it's probably not a good sign because Todd Orlando, in recent history, has not been a good defensive coordinator. And a lot of the hires they made, um, you know, either came off that Texas staff that got fired, or they hired a Dante Williams away from Oregon. And while he's a you know, supposed to be a great recruiter and probably a good recruiter at the very least. Oregon didn't have a good secondary last year and they haven't had good defensive back play. So I, that's, it's the biggest question mark this off season. I think is what are these coaches going to do? And it'll be interesting to see. I'm not convinced yet that they're going to be any different than what USC had last year. So Chris, were you in the camp that eight and five following five and seven was not good enough? Clay Helton should have been let go or, he had to work through three quarterbacks. They had a very difficult schedule, especially the first six games, a lot of injuries elsewhere, and he did pretty well to get to eight and four before the bowl loss uh, and justified his his contract of being renewed. Yeah, I don't think he should have been renewed. I think he should have been let go. I understand that quarterbacks go down and you know the se- tough season schedule, all that kind of stuff, but that's everywhere in college football. That's college football. <laughs> You know, they're kids. I'm basically, they're 18 to 22 year olds, the kids. There's going to be injuries, and everyone has a tough schedule. You know, you're playing in a Power Five conference, and the Pac 12 probably isn't, you know, one of the tougher ones, and the Pac 12 South is not one of the tougher divisions in the conference. So I get it. You can make excuses, and you can, you know, you can, you can point out all the things that went wrong that were outside of Clay Helton's control. And I understand why people do that, but it's not enough. I mean, Having a losing season at USC the year before, I think, is incre- is just completely unacceptable. I think he should have been fired right then. 
honestly, they hadn't had a losing season in 18 years. The last guy that had a losing season got fired because it's USC. You don't do that, you know? Not only is it one of, you know, it's arguably the best job in all of college football, right? It's arguably the top program, definitely top five. Uh, they're also in Los Angeles, and and every school in the Pac-12 has to get their players away from USC when they're in high school. They have to come to L.A. and take them away from USC. That's happening now. That's unacceptable. It just is. So after that losing season, after recruiting fell apart, which it has the last two seasons, it's not been up to USC or any, or any Power 5 top school standard at all. I would have let Clay Helton go because I think not only is it that he's proven – that he's not a top end coach, which is what USC should have. Um, and I think we already knew that before any of this happened, just because when he got hired, he wasn't that guy. We all knew that. But on top of that, he's lost the the faith of the high school recruits and the high school football coaches. They don't believe he's going to be there. They don't believe he's going to get the job done. And you're seeing the impact in recruiting. USC signed a class last year that was so bad. I, and I, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to insult any of the high school players or anything like that. Good for them. They went to USC, obviously, right? They, and they're all good football players in a sense because of that. Sure. That's, that class did not live up to USC standards. USC should have a top ten recruiting class every year. They should have the best recruiting class in the Pac-12 every year. And honestly, it was one of the worst recruiting classes in all of Power Five conference football. And the, there were a group of five conference teams that were better than them. And that to me is unacceptable. It's USC. It's not Kentucky or Kansas or, you know, one of these schools that you could see falling apart, having a bad year recruiting. It's unacceptable. So I, I believe Clay Helton should already be out of a job. I think that, honestly, if he doesn't win a national championship this year, I know that seems insane because they, they shouldn't win a national championship. They shouldn't, right? They're, that's not what they are at all, and they're not even close. But at USC, when you've been there, you know, four or five years, if you don't win a national championship, what are you, why are they keeping you? It's USC. That's what they're supposed to win a national championship. So I think, I think it's just time to move on. So that, that's really the only thing he could do to kind of, to get me on the other side to think, Hey, this guy should keep his job because if he wins a national championship, it's like, okay, you did what you, what you were supposed to do at USC, even a conference championship or a Rose bowl, it falls short because honestly, the path that USC has, considering what they are, they should be in Rose Bowl and Pac-12 championship contention every year, no matter who the coach is, no matter what the quarterback situation is, the injury situation. That should just happen. And that's that's my opinion on it. I, I understand that people are going to think differently, but I think it's time to move on from Clay Helton. I think it's past time for that. And, and especially when the tenure started uh, in a decent place, he finished off the 2015 season, he gets to a Rose Bowl, and even though they didn't win the Pac-12, I think any by any good measurement, you knew that they were the best team in the Pac-12. They beat Washington head-to-head -head by two scores, the team that went to the college football playoff. They followed that up by winning the Pac-12, getting to a Cotton Bowl. But there was always the, when they ran up against Notre Dame, Ohio State, an elite team, they got trounced. But still, they, they were the best program at that point in the Pac-12, and now they've slidden off with five wins and eight wins. So you would think... Uh, and, and then, uh, so we're speaking, everyone, with uh, uh, the director of recruiting at uh, USC 247. So you bring up a, a, a tremendous talking point in regards to despite the moderate success, but not at USC level expectations for 2016 and 17, Clay Helton was at least bringing in, I think he had two top five classes, three top 10 classes. And then even when they took a dip, they were in the top 20 in 2019. And then I can understand kids not knowing if Clay Helton was going to be there and that being a factor in in the big drop-off last year because the coach being in limbo, but still 52nd in the nation, 10th in the Pac-12. As you mentioned, you don't see those kind of numbers out of – you mentioned Kentucky. They're, they're, they're recruiting in the top 25 to 30 in the nation. Uh, how do you explain – the bottom out of recruiting and these SEC teams coming in and others uh, into Southern California and other teams in the Pac-12, as you mentioned, and getting the best recruits. Yeah, because what you're seeing is the the kids in the in the local high school coaches have lost faith in Clay Helton and USC. They don't think that USC develops talent the way they should, which is true. Because if you go five and seven, you're not developing talent the way you should. They're seeing too many four- and five-star guys go in there and not become anything. And they also don't have confidence that he'll even be there. So it's even though even if they had 
said earlier than you know they did last year that he was returning as the head coach is he going to be there next year i don't know you don't know we don't know because every year usc has to announce that they are retaining clay helton because there's a question whether or not he should be fired so as as a call as a high school football player going into college football are you going to commit to a coach that you think might not be there are you going to commit to a coach that you think is he developing uh you know players right can he help me get to the nfl are you going to commit to a program that over the last few seasons has shown that they cannot win on the big stage? Cause they don't under Clay Helton. They just, I mean, the Rose bowl. Yes. And, and against Washington back in 2016. Yes. But outside of that, every big game scenario USC has lost and they've gotten embarrassed for the most part. It seems like they're a step behind those programs. So eventually what you see is that while USC has a huge advantage with being the local team playing in front of grandma, takes a backseat to your football career. And that's what's happening is these kids go, you know what, I'm going to go play for Clemson because I know Davos Sweeney's going to be there. I know they develop talent. I know they're going to compete for a national championship. I'm going to go to Alabama because of the same reasons. Nick Saban will be there. He develops talent. They compete for national championships. We don't know if Clay Helton will be there. We don't, we, it's, I think it's become pretty clear that they don't develop talent. For example, this year, they, USC only had two uh, players invited to the NFL Combine. There were, team, there were a group of five teams that doubled them up in that number. There are a group of five programs that are developing talent better than USC right now. And that's a big problem. So when you look at all those factors, are you, are you going to stay home? Nine, ki- nine times out of ten, all things equal if usc was what it should be the kid's staying home you're going to play in front of your family you grew up rooting for usc as a kid whatever it may be you just don't want to fly across the country go to school in a new state whatever it is nine times out of ten all things being equal the kid stays home that's just that's just how it is if you look at recruiting history all things aren't equal right now so you're seeing the top kids are leaving the west coast because of that and if usc fires Clay Helton and hires anyone else. Doesn't have to be Urban Meyer. Literally anyone else. That won't happen anymore because that coach will get a chance. The kids will give him a chance. They Clay Helton's worn out everyone's patience. It's not his fault. He keeps just, you know, taking he took a job that anyone would have taken and they they don't fire him and he keeps doing his job. I can't blame him, but there's no reason to go to USC until they show that they're committed to winning football games. And right now it just looks like the administration isn't committed to that. Chris Peterson in Washington seemed to take over the Pac-12's best program mantle for a couple of years. And now it seems to be Mario Cristobal and Oregon with the top recruiting classes in the Pac-12 the past two years. And as you mentioned a few minutes ago in the Pac-12 South, USC doesn't even need to be USC to hold off Utah that's a good program. And there are no other good programs in the division. They, They should win that without issue uh, again either them or utah but they should win that thing three to four out of five years with, with no problem getting to it and, and they got an automatic route to the pac-12 championship game if nothing else not even being usc of Pete carroll standards it's it's true i mean you mentioned utah utah came out of the mountain west conference what was it eight years ago now yeah and, and they're they're a monster in the pac-12 stuff there's nothing there preventing you USC should be better than Utah without even trying. And that's really, that's their biggest competition. Colorado has shown a couple of good years, but when they were in the Big 12, before they left for the Pac-12, they are an absolute mess. They're in the cellar. UCLA is USC's little brother. Arizona and Arizona State have been in the conference since 1978, and they haven't done anything. There's, they, they have a path, just like you said. They should show up. They should beat all those teams, maybe lose one game, and then they're playing for the opportunity to play in the Rose Bowl. It's the best situation, really, for any for any Power Five uh, superpower in all of college football, because everyone else has that uh, has that rival, either a divisional rival or you know another rival in the conference, where it's like, oh, they're preventing them, you know, from from maybe winning it every year. USC doesn't have that in the Pac-12. USC is Pac-12 football. There's no other program. It just isn't. I mean, I know Oregon's been doing very well recently. Washington had a resurgence. Stanford's had good years. But if you look at the Pac-12 historically, it is USC 
miles and miles in front of everyone else. And for good reason. For good reason. They have all the history, and everybody has to go to L.A. to get those kids. And now they're in the – I think arguably, and I would, I, in my opinion, it is, the easiest division in, in Power 5 football. It is. It's the easiest division. And – it's still not happening for them. So I think that, and I, and people know this and that, and going back to the recruiting thing, that's, that's why it hurts in recruiting. And that's why fans are frustrated with the, with the coaches and with the administration. It's because USC without really even uh, trying as hard as they should have, as they should, or without even being what they should be, should still be going to Rose Bowls and win, you know, winning a few of them. Chris Watson uh, telling it like it is on USC football. Chris, we appreciate you stopping by and join Chris on uh, USC 247.